I'm Chloe West and I'm nine years old. All right, Luke, how old are you? Six. You're six, and what grade are you in? Kindergarten. You're in kindergarten? Uh, my name is Kevin Connors. I'm 13 years old and I go to Cumberland, North Cumberland Middle School. What food are you not supposed to eat? Peanuts, eggs. I'm allergic to wheat, soy, dairy, nuts, eggs, and fish. Sesame seeds. I'm allergic to peanuts, soy, almonds, and eggs. When Luke was a baby, he had severe eczema. From the moment he was born, severe. His entire body, his head, his legs, his trunk. We finally thought he had a dairy allergy and might have been allergic to the formula we were feeding him. So at about eight or nine months old, we took him to have an allergy test done. And it came back not negative to, I mean, it came back negative for dairy allergy, but it came pos back positive for uh, peanut and egg. About a week before our appointment for his first year checkup, I had, we have four children and Kev's the youngest. We were all in the car um, coming home from a shopping trip and he was really hungry so I had one of the kids gave him a peanut butter nab cracker and he really didn't even eat it but it was like all over his face and then they said to me, Mom, you know, Kev's face is all red. And I wasn't sure if it was from the peanut butter or from them wiping him up afterwards. So. I mentioned it to his pediatrician when we went to the appointment the next week. I mean, I didn't give him any peanut butter in the middle, in the interim. Um, so she tested him, and he tested positive for peanuts. It was early on. She was about two weeks old, and she was she couldn't hold anything down. I was nursing, complete nursing, nope, not bottle fed, and she would just vomit every, after every meal, after every feeding, and. Um, we, she was in the hospital for all kinds of bowel tests, intestinal tests, x-rays, couldn't figure out anything. Finally, um, an, a rash erupted on her face, which is a very regular sign of a food allergy. So then the doctors asked me to omit some things from my diet. None of it worked. Um, so she was diagnosed with a food allergy. spectrum actually. You have some patients that have the classic symptoms of anaphylaxis and other people who will get say eczema flaring or stomach pain. The classic mechanism is it enters the GI tract. There's immunologic um, occurrences at the GI tract where you have the antigen which is the food, the antibodies which some people just make against random things whether it's food or pollens or dust. And then you have this explosive immune response, which causes all the symptoms. He had hives, um, and you know his blood pressure started to drop. He had some hives. He had hives in his mouth and hives in his body. My tongue feels funny. My throat feels funny. First, my tongue got like itchy, and then it went to my throat, and then my stomach started to hurt. His breathing was really loud. It would always end up with usually the food coming back up. You know, they gave him epinephrine and then they decided they needed to call rescue. So they called rescue and um, they, gave, they actually gave him a second dose of epinephrine. And by the time they got him to the ambulance, he had stabilized. Most, most often it's in early childhood that we'll see food reactions. And often for the presentations we see, they're pretty dramatic. Anaphylaxis in the ER. We'll see them, you know, a few days later after they got out of the emergency room. We'll see the real common ones are peanuts, nuts, shellfish, but what's tough is we're seeing a lot of milk, egg, wheat, and soy as well, which are ingredients in everything. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's hard to avoid these things. We've been very lucky. We have been able to catch a reaction very early and stop it immediately with Benadryl, a large dose of Benadryl. To, and we've, it's never progressed into her breathing. We've never had to use an EpiPen. I've been on the phone with the doctor and it's been close and the doctor's been saying, give it five more minutes and the Benadryl's not working, go for the EpiPen, but we've never had to do that.
she was my first child with a food allergy, so I didn't really know what to do. Um, but I had friends with children with food allergies, and they guided me. They said, oh, it's not a problem. Call the school nurse. And, and there and behold, there was a whole protocol already set up. You know, mm -hmm. you meet with the school nurse during the summer before school even starts, a sit down face to face with the child or without, and you talk to the school nurse about reactions and what you've experienced at home and things that they could look for and, you know, good notes are taken and, um, and the medicine's kept at the school. Well, it's been an evolutionary process. You know, I, I've been here for 15 years and for the first few years I didn't ha even have a child with an allergy and then got a kindergartner who had a peanut allergy. And so as we've gone along, we've certainly uh, put things into place to keep kids safe. We don't currently have any school-wide policies in relation to allergies. It varies based on the grade in the classroom, specifically if there are children who have life-threatening allergies in the classroom. We certainly try to uh, make sure that the kids feel safe and, and included in everything that, that the students do. Well, um, for the past five years, we've been required by the um, Rhode Island Department of um, Health to have um, policies in place for food allergies, uh, for kids with uh, severe peanut allergies and nut allergies in particular. We have to have um, signs at every door saying that we have children with nut or peanut allergies. We have to have um, specific classrooms for those children. We can't sell any nut or peanut products in the cafeterias. In most schools, there's either a peanut free table or a peanut table. So there's a, just a table that's designated where uh, no, if any student has any peanut in their food, um, they, shouldn't be, they shouldn't be sitting there. So any student who has a peanut allergy will sit there and usually have some of their friends there too, whether they have allergies or not. Um, and then it's cleaned in a different way um, you know, by the cafeteria staff and uh, just to make sure that uh, it's, you know, it stays as, as sanitary as possible. We came up with the idea of a peanut table. So the kids actually are so good about it. They will go and sit at tables that are peanut tables if they've brought something to school that has peanut, peanuts in it or ha was produced in a plant that produces peanuts. By having all the peanut product at a couple tables, the um, janitors can pay extra attention to um, the, the kid tables that the kids sit at and do a really good job wiping them down. I don't think it's a big, um, it's very popular with a lot of the moms who have to send peanut butter every day. I know that it, I've heard grumbles, well my kid has to sit at the peanut, but I also on the other flip side have heard moms say, my son so and so wants to sit with your son so he's bringing turkey today. I would say the biggest annoyance of the whole thing, frustration, is all of the treats that come into school not because I'm worried about her having a reaction to them because it's one more thing that she can't participate in and she can't have. We just started you know a you know foodless parties um, you know within the first grade and they party a lot in the first grade between birthdays and Valentine's and Christmas Halloween you know, there's a lot um, so trying to get them to view those parties as you know there's ways to celebrate without having food there in, in ways to celebrate in ways that are not going to make anybody feel uncomfortable or not included in, in the celebration. You would think that I would be like really behind that <laughs> given that Kevin's allergic to things but I just I really didn't think it was such a great idea because I think that like food is part of the way um, humans celebrate occasions mm -hmm. so I think that it's sort of artificial to eliminate food from from occasion, so I thought it was kind of a shame, really. Yeah, food-free classrooms. I don't, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> it seems that would be an awful lot of work to be transporting children out of classrooms for just to have snacks out of there. I don't really see that we have any need for food-free classrooms. Um, we don't. We have peanut-free classrooms, not free classrooms, um, and that's the Rhode Island law says that we have to have one classroom per grade that's not free but our kids go class to class so often um, you know read in a different room and first grade reads to third graders and people are traveling all over the place 
And so the principal um, and I came up with the idea of just not allowing peanut products in the classroom. I think public awareness and parental awareness is key. So, you know, on those days that there's a child that has a birthday and they want to send some sort of food in, the, I think the public and parental awareness is more important. And then we send something for Luke. Um, and, and there are some of the parents that have actually baked something that doesn't contain eggs, you know, in support of Luke's oh, allergy. Every and, time. And, you know, so I think it's, I think it's key for the, for the parental awareness. And, you know, education is sort of key to making sure that these kids can still go in and they can have a, you know, birthday party celebration in the room. And, you know, I mean, Luke's fine if he doesn't eat something that has egg in it. And there's plenty of other things that they can share that don't have eggs in it, um, which I think is, is probably better than banning it all together. Well, I've been here 15 years. I've had multiple, multiple kids with uh, peanut allergies and other, other food allergies, and we have never had an episode here at Melville School. Yeah, thankfully, we, you know, it's my second year here, and we haven't had any um, during my time here, which is, is good. Well, I've been a school nurse teacher for 21 years, and not that we can't have one in an hour from now, but I have never given an EpiPen for um, a nut or peanut related um, problem. I mean, the policies that we have work to a certain extent, but um, they're limited and we're, and we're not consistent enough. And, and I think, you know, beyond putting a policy in place, we have to really do a lot with awareness and, and helping all parents to understand the impact that this has on our community uh, and members of our community, um, to help students and parents understand what it feels like to be the student in the class who can't per participate in parties in the same way that other students can continuously have to seek out their own alternatives um, instead of just doing what everyone else is doing. You know, it, when it's something that you don't live with, it's, it's hard for people who don't live with it to understand. And um, when you know people with it, when you treat patients with it, or if you've experienced yourself, you finally, you get it. And I'll just tell anyone who doesn't have a food allergy to just be, sim be sympathetic and just try to understand. I get comments often that my kids, people say, Chloe just seems so mature. She seems, she seems like, I don't know, just, you know, and I get the same thing about Parker, and um, they just seem well adjusted, people say. And I really do think it's because they've had to deal with certain social situations that most kids their age don't have to deal with. It helps a child, it helps a child socially to have something that's different, to be a little different. You just don't take things for granted. There's so many more kids in his age bracket now that have the food allergies. So I think, again, I think the stigma is gone of, you know, that child has a food allergy and there's one kid sitting at the peanut free table as opposed to now you go in, there's, you know, the table's full. They're looking yeah. for more tables at this point to sit kids at. There's that many kids with these food allergies. So like overall, you're, you sound like you're very comfortable with it and like you definitely got everything handled. Most of the time. <laughs>